BBC presenter Nihal Athanayaka has said that there is an illusion that rural areas are unwelcoming to ethnic minorities. Athanayaka told the Country Walking magazine, there is this barrier, a perception often perpetuated by social media trolls, that the countryside is inherently white and middle class. So joining me now to discuss this is comedian and broadcaster Tommy Sandu. Tommy, welcome to the show. We have got him somewhere, Tommy. He's coming in just one moment. Uh, but I'm going to come to my panel first about this. Now, look, I've heard this again and again for yeah. many years, this idea of uh, the countryside being an essentially white domain mm -hmm. and that people feel that uh, people mm -hmm. of colour feel they can't go into the countryside. Do you think that's true? Is the countryside racist? Well, sheep are white, predominantly. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of them. And we do know that they can be paid very aggressively to somebody whose melanin count is quite high. So, potentially... Well, would you say that's true? Well, do you ever go in the countryside? Well, God for the black and white mixed-race cows, yeah. because obviously they, they will even out these things. You know what, I kind of I kind of feel like the, the pair of you aren't taking this too seriously. Um, maybe Tom, have we got Tommy yet? Because it'd be great to talk to him. Tommy Sandu, <coughs> here he is. Welcome to the show, Tommy. Ta-da! Yeah, there you are. Are you offended by the countryside? Is it is it a racist domain? Hugely. I'm now, see, because of what your lovely comedians have just said, I mean, I now feel the need that one of us has got to take this a little bit more seriously. Yeah. So, look, um, I, I, and I think, I think particularly Sajila may uh, agree with this. It's not, no, the countryside is not not welcoming to brown people. It's a cultural thing, right? you got to understand, I'm Punjabi. My family got on a boat for several weeks to come over to this country back in the 50s or whenever it was. For, for the one sole purpose to improve their lives. They left behind a load of countryside and fields. They don't want to come here and start walking around fields and countrysides. So it's a bit like, it, it's a bit of a busman's holiday if they come over here and start walking around the fields. They're like, well, why did you leave India then? Um, I think what's going on here is typically Asian families or minority families are, are in you, you, it's drilled into you, you know, work hard, be something, you know, we're here to improve ourselves. This is a great country. This is a, a, a country of opportunities. So things like rambling, walking, hiking, and in general, actually kind of leisurely activities, they weren't encouraged a generation ago, but things have massively changed. Like my mum and dad never even did holidays, but now things are changing. My generation, my kids, we live near Epping forest where I am right now in East London. And, um, it's it, and we go out to the forest as often as possible but but you're right it's still not the done thing for people from a brown background well th this is interesting because you know whenever i've been in the countryside i mean maybe i've missed this but i i've always seen people from all sorts of backgrounds in the in the countryside is, it, is that just the, the the forests that i hang out in <laughs> Pro probably dodgy, but... you, you've got a multicultural <laughs> forest I, I don't know or, or maybe your forest is located somewhere on the borders where, where lots of foreigners are coming through i don't know but it, <laughs> it, it, what what this is is it's honestly i think it's just a work ethic it's a cultural thing and it's it's a, it is a bit of a nonsense point and the last thing i'd want is for british people including myself to feel like oh no the countryside is racist and actually that's not what nahar was saying he's saying there's an illusion and what he also refers to is um social media trolls that are somehow creating this divide. I've never seen a tweet, an Instagram post, a Facebook post says, why are you brownies? When we see you in the fields, we're going to get you. <laughs> like, like, there is no social media trolls putting me off going to the countryside. I, I think it's important that you made the point that Nihal wasn't saying that the countryside is racist or that that, that, that is a perception. But actually, I have seen people post and say that the, they feel the countryside is exclusionary uh, to those who aren't from a min middle class white background. I've even seen an article, I can't remember the publication, I wish I could, which said that the countryside was exclusionary to LGBT people, as though we, we can't walk into a field. Uh, you know, I mean, so uh, there are people who are, who are attempting to make this uh, a, a means by which people can be victimised further for no good reason. I, I agree. But in this, I think, again, it's, it's more down to probably people's own insecurity. They're all feeling that maybe when you do go to the countryside, I love it. When I walk into a country pub, I will get people looking around. You, you definitely get a turn of heads. A little bit, a little air of silence, you know, that you've walked in. But that could well be because a Londoner's walked in, not necessarily because a brown person's I, walked I've in. I've had that as when well. I was in... <laughs> Maybe because yeah. I hang out in forests. <laughs> 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 but I think that it's, it, uh, with those sort of local pubs, it's often because you're not known. It's often because they That's all right. know each other. They drink with each other all the time. And I suppose you could interpret that as, uh, as, as being hostile in some way. Maybe. 
Yeah, but but it, but it's really not. And that's, again, what Nihal was saying was, actually, when you get talking to locals, you realise how friendly they are and how wild they are. I did have someone in Bournemouth once um, come up to me and just, she was an old white lady, and she just was staring at me. And I said, are you all right? Are you lost? And she went, where are you from? Right? That question. And I, I said, oh, Punjabi roots, but from East London and all that, like I normally do. And she went, lovely, lovely brown skin. She was just like, <laughs> just wowed by it. So sometimes, you know, that kind of being a little bit unfamiliar, it, you know, it's kind of down to the individual as well as so how we want to carry that. Um, and and you got to also understand, I mean, Andrew, when, when was the last time you went into a, a Sikh temple, a Godvara? Um, I must say it's been a while. As right. in never. Be, but, but you are welcome. See, everybody, I'm Sikh, my background is Sikh. Anybody from any background is welcome to walk into a, a Sikh temple and there is food there and you can eat. As long as you cover your head, take your shoes off, you respect it. In the same way, you wouldn't necessarily just walk on in there and feel comfortable. You might feel like you get looks because it's just culturally, you know, you will stand out. Culturally, at the moment, we, you know, a brown person, a, a black family it, walking through the forest does stand out. Even, I tell you what, even I live in the Epping Forest. When I see a group of like black and Asian guys all on their bicycles, I sort of look at them like, hey, that's... That's a new thing. My dad and his mates would not have gone cycling through the forest because they were here to work. But our new generation think, will. Do you ever think, Tommy, I mean, sometimes I feel a, li a little bit sad that the, the way that we really uh, emphasise race now in a way that we didn't when I was growing up. We didn't really, you know, we just didn't care. We were just nice to each other and no one treated each other differently because of their race. But now there's a kind of hyper-racialised uh, identity politics that has come in that has made make us notice our differences more and more, which perhaps isn't as progressive as it thinks it is. I agree. And and even like what you were discussing earlier on, when I was watching the show about um, the roots behind what you can say and kind of cancel culture and language. Oh, comedy. That's what we're looking at. The um, About the in-betweeners. Yes, we know that deep down, if you go down to the, you know, kind of the acorn behind some of the jokes that are made, there might be a serious racist point. But if you did that with everything, as we are now doing, then actually... There's no fun for anyone, you know, and there is some innocent fun. What I will say is racists aren't just in the countryside and they aren't just in England. They're in India. If you went, if you walked into a pub equivalent in somewhere in India, you'd get looks. You'd be made to feel a little bit unwelcome. They'd be a little, you'd be a little bit alien to them. So, but whether someone is actually feeling racial hatred or whether someone's a bit like, hey, he doesn't look like he's from around there or he looks a bit different or she looks a bit different. That's very different. And curiosity and we can't now inquire about people. We can't ask questions about culture and heritage to learn because we're in danger of offending people. Exactly what you're saying, that hyper like kind of raised sensitivity around the issue. And and I just, I don't like articles and stories like this because I love Britain and I loved my time in Bournemouth University where I, li I lived for years. And I also liked actually the fact that I was one of only a few brown people down there. Bit of a novelty factor. I didn't want to, I come from East London where there's a lot of brown people. So I wanted to study in a place that wasn't like, you know, m m the way I, w where I was growing up. But again, I can think it comes down to the individual. I think you know, I would, t I would ask sort of brown and black people or people of color or people who feel that they may be not welcome in certain areas to actually just go and embrace it and, and almost, almost drop that. Th that doesn't exist. And we know people from rural countryside areas are the most hospitable. We know they're the most, you know, they're the, sometimes the most warmest people ever. And they've definitely got more time to chat, more time to share stories. And there's more similarities probably with people from ethnic backgrounds to those from the countryside, with the farming, with the rural life. That's a lot more relatable to me than city life. Well, that's a nice note to end on. Don't fear the countryside. Tommy Sandu, thanks very much for joining me. Thank you.